welcome to Leaders of Tomorrow, India's only daily television platform for small businesses. We bring you the right information to empower you, the SME entrepreneur. Tonight on the show, we're bringing you part two of an interview that I did previously with V. Vedinathan of Capital First, talking amongst other things about the importance of hiring right and culture when it comes to MAs for small businesses. Take a listen to some highlights of that interview. In the first part of this two-part exclusive interview with V. Vedyanathan of Capital First, we spoke with him about the merger with IDFC Bank, where he refuted all charges of perhaps having overpaid for the merger, which was a charge being made by minority stakeholders, and said that the synergies of the merger are immense in the long run for Capital First and IDFC Bank. Listen in to what he said to us in that interview. Here's a quick snapshot. Why perhaps these valuations? I think the valuation was a, perhaps a fair uh, sort of a uh, valuation because it was put together professionally between two institutions. The valuation of the past story has happened about a year ago. I don't think there's any re-looking about that at all. In continuation with that interview, today in part two, we talk to him about the importance of hiring the right people for the right roles, why mentoring for small businesses is so important and how small businesses can deal with government reforms easily. India's monthly goods and services tax collections crossed 1 lakh crore rupees for the first time in April 2018, indicating that the indirect tax regime was stabilizing and that economic revival was picking up pace. When we spoke with V. Vedyanathan, he said that the rates are lowest for small businesses and while the tax on luxury goods remains high, he is hopeful that the government will consider decreasing it to increase the luxury goods market in the country. According to Vedinathan, mentoring is done on the job where leaders need to lead by example. He also emphasized the role of keeping abreast with the latest trends and keeping in touch with the younger generation to understand how new business avenues can be created. How will technology change what's happening at the grassroots level when it comes to banking? Government is talking about, you know, banking for all. You have the Beam app that you were talking about, for instance. There's a lot happening. But at the actual grassroots level, do you see technology then having a significant impact? Uh, most definitely. Uh, like, like I told you, it's enabling transactions that traditional will not. Uh, the, the other thing that I'm seeing is uh, that uh, someone I know is actually financing college students. Not possible before because you'd normally go back to somebody and say that, look, give me an income tax return. A college student can't pay you an income tax return. So, uh, you know, there, there was someone who was the other day financing an apple grower in Kashmir for a period of three months, just for the period apples are produced. These things could not be done by the traditional way. So I do feel that, uh, that uh, this has uh, definitely uh, expanded the storyline. Okay, let's talk about GST. First and foremost, in terms of the overall, uh, you know, the GST that has come in. One is the interest rates, and maybe I can get your comments on that. But two, also specifically for MSMEs. A lot of MSMEs were perhaps caught off guard. At least that's what most of the industry was saying, that they didn't have A, the finances, and B, they didn't have the adequate knowledge when it came to GST compliance. Uh, there weren't enough CAs who perhaps understood you know, what GST changes had to be made. How are you viewing that? Do you think that small businesses have now managed to keep up with the change? Frankly, I am amazed with the fact that a, a large nation with so many industries and so many education levels, mm -hmm. uh, with uh, with the partial levels of digitization, depending on the stage of the of the chain the, uh, the 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 shopkeeper is or the distributor is, for that level of complexity, the fact that GST has been pulled through, frankly, I'm amazed because it is, sometimes it looks complex, but sometimes you wonder how come these people at this level could pull off this level of complexity. So to that extent, I actually feel that it's it's an amazing pull off. Um, now, uh, is it is it settling in? I think with the changes the government is bringing in every a few months after seeing the issues on the ground, I think it will definitely settle. I think settled down a lot when you look at it over the last few months. Okay, uh, but are you concerned maybe that it's been unfair to MSMEs and SMEs because of the high because of the high rates of GST on certain goods and taxes? I don't think the GST rates have been high at all. Actually, okay. there have been uh, there there were a bucket of uh, products in the in the 28 percent category, which has been as you know pr being pruned down from time to time. But generally, most common tax rate structure you see is 18 percent, which is pretty much par for the course. Okay, uh, I also want to talk about a credit quality. In recent comments you made. Uh, post your results, you have spoken about how the credit quality, particularly where small businesses are concerned, has definitely started going up. What would you credit that to? And I want to get sort of a three, four month 
time frame from you to say, do you expect that will hold out? See, we talked on the many technological changes that are happening around us. Yeah. More number of customers on bureau, more abilities to pay. All that has actually improving the ability to collect from customers. The, with technology, we're able to underwrite better because there are more data points and more instantaneously mm -hmm. and collect better. I'll give you an example. Earlier, for example, if a customer returned the checks unpaid, let me say that out of 100,000 checks you present, maybe 10% of them have returned unpaid. Now those 10% customers, you had to send somebody to the customer's place to collect the money back. That went on for decades. Now in the last maybe three years or so, now the same customer can come and of course pay on, next phase was to come and pay through internet bank if you call them up. Now the customer can download an app they can download any number of apps and just wire the money or pay us through Paytm or Patreon. Now, this did not exist before. So the, the, now the customer can pay us through many more means. What we call the digital transactions is not only for lending, it's also for monitoring, it's also for collections. So I think because of that, credit quality is improving. Even as we're talking about GST and the kind of changes it's brought to the economy, I also want to talk about the interest rates. A lot of people, particularly small businesses, said it's too high. Uh, your comments on that? Uh, like I said, that uh, generally speaking, most rates are now adjusted 18% and some exception products have been left at 28%. The generic uh, approach has been that uh, luxury items have been kept at 28%. Over time, I think uh, the, the system will probably note that even luxury products are uh, end of the day being sold and distributed by, uh, by the common man. If someone is buying a Mercedes car, for example, uh, or someone is buying a luxury car, the, the, the dealership who's selling it is not necessarily the richest guy. The sales executive who's selling it is not exactly the richest guy. So uh, e eventually, I think uh, most uh, tax structures, uh, you know, ideally, which settled around, 28 per, uh, around 18%, that would probably be great. Is the worst over because it seemed like the small businesses, the SMEs and the MSMEs, are the ones who are getting hit the most. Looking forward again, four, five, six months, do you expect that perhaps lending to small businesses will improve? I almost feel certain that the big ticket NPAs that you've seen in the system are, have all been disclosed. I am not expecting any significant deterioration any further on the ecosystem at large. If you notice between 2015 to 2018, there was a major disclosure that is going on. It's all disclosed, I think. I don't think you're going to see any more bad news. Now, as far as small entrepreneurs are concerned, there was never any bad news. You tell me any lender in the country having a problem with small, small business credit. There was never any problem, actually. Okay, uh, let's do some crystal ball gazing. Any banker, one question that they will definitely get asked is uh, interest rates and interest rate outlook. Uh, you know, what, what's it looking like? Any sort of outlook that you can leave us with? I'd say that uh, as, as you well know, you know, based on oil prices and uh, all the global factors and inflation, these things keep moving up and down. Uh, our uh, role as uh, bankers and even as, as entrepreneurs is actually to stay with the ecosystem. You know, rates have been uh, have risen in the last one year, probably probably stay this way for the next five or six months, and after that it will be what it will be. But, but I think what we should do is to see how we're going to adapt to the new ecosystem. For example, if you're a small entrepreneur and you're finding that my interest rates have gone up by 100, 150 basis points, I would say if you're a small entrepreneur, there's little you can do about interest rates. It is set by Reserve Bank India, it is set by the larger ecosystem. We as entrepreneurs should see what are we going to do with the situation we are in. And I would say therefore focus more on opportunities and interest rates are, are where they are. You can't do much about it. Time for a break here on part two of a conversation that we did with V. Vaidyanathan of Capital First. Much more on the other side in terms of the ecosystem for the financial system. That's coming up on the other side. Just stay tuned. Back with us here on Leaders of Tomorrow and tonight we're continuing a, a conversation that we did with V. Vaidyanathan of Capital Fest. So one of the things that we perhaps don't talk about uh, enough when it comes to entrepreneurs and small businesses is the cost of not hiring right. 
uh, there's definitely a cost involved, both monetary as well as time that's involved. I, I want to get your views on that. Do you see too much of that happening in small businesses? What's your advice to them? See, my sense is that um, small entrepreneurs do struggle. Uh, it, it is true and it is one of the difficulties they face because they're small, maybe the brand is not as, uh, as uh, strong or powerful, maybe the working conditions are not as much as a large corporation. So they have some handicaps and therefore it reflects in the quality of the hiring. Now, uh, if, but we all know that a good quality talent really powers an organization ahead. Now, how do we bridge this gap? I would therefore say that uh, even in smaller firms, if they can uh, carve out some equity for significant uh, employees, uh, either through phantom stocks or whichever way, I think it will make a big difference to their lives. Okay. How does a small business then ensure uh, that they're um, hiring the kind of manpower which is really required for their business? What should one look at is what I'm trying to get at. See, the, the, what we look at, uh, let me just say, let me just say for, for, for our organization, we look for our people who are energetic, who are motivated, who, are, who have some contextual knowledge but don't need to be experts, but attitudinally has to be fantastic. Now, these theories definitely apply for small entrepreneurs as well. If they are energetic, if they are motivated, if their attitude is, is, is very, very good, uh, and if they are in tune with the larger mission of an organization, then I think that's the kind of people to hire. Okay, uh, what role perhaps does then the culture of the founder or the CEO play when it comes to ensuring that that same culture is the one that's percolating, not just top down but also bottom up? Yes, uh, of course. Needless to say, otherwise it would. If if you didn't do that, it would be an incongruous organization. Uh, but I think uh, leaders have to lead by example, and I think that means in every way, in keeping up with the promises, in keeping up with the commitments to the customers, in the way they talk to their employees. I think there's a lot that depends on the people who are who are seniors and who are senior management, who are entrepreneurs. A lot depends on them to set the example. Okay. Uh, one part of uh, technology, and we were talking about technology for the business and how it's disrupting lending, uh, but technology in terms of digital as well and how businesses now are building brands and communicating that brand online and using digital and social media to communicate that. It's just as easy to destroy a brand as it is to build it online. Okay. So uh, what should you keep in mind? The first thing to keep in mind, in my opinion, is that even if you're a small organization and if you're a small budget entity, uh, the digital platform gives you a, a very big opportunity uh, because digital has bridged the divide, let me say, between the big and the small. Uh, you, you might just find sometimes small brands punching above the weight on the digital space. So people should see it as a very big opportunity. Okay. How does a leader like yourself ensure that you're constantly learning? How do you keep yourself abreast of everything that's happening? How much time do you take out of your day perhaps to learn something new? Uh, two things actually. One is uh, I, I take an effort to surf uh, at least uh, some portion of time, sometimes aimlessly, but sometimes looking for specific things. So it just throws lots of things at us from the digital world. Two is that um, you know this uh, the newer generation of employees joining the organization sometimes can be very very uh, useful. Okay, speaking of a younger uh, employee base, how do you ensure that they're staying engaged and committed to their job? Because clearly the rules that are used to apply to keeping your employees engaged perhaps don't apply anymore. Definitely, that's that's very right. Because uh, one thing about. Um, uh, the newer generation, uh, among other things, that they are energetic, they are motivated, they want to achieve something. We have found that they relate to a mission, they relate to a purpose. For example, when we communicate to our own employees that this is the mission of the organization, this is what we want to achieve, people get energized by such things. It's not just working conditions. It's not just giving them bean bags and getting a place to to sleep or you know carry a dog to work, okay. maybe it works in larger corporations like Facebook and and, and, and others. Uh, we, uh, other organizations may neither have the culture for it nor may not have the infrastructure for it, but still, uh, you know, a, a, a mission is a clue. Mentoring is something that uh, we talk about very often. I do remember asking you this last year as well in terms of uh, mentoring and why it's crucial. But uh, my question to you. Uh, today is to understand how perhaps you, with everything that's perhaps you know going on, take the time to learn for yourself, but also take the time to mentor someone else. How do you do that? I actually believe that most of such things is is uh, on the job. Uh, you know, mentoring. Uh, Otherwise, would probably be ac becoming academic exercise. If I sat with an employee and say, I want to mentor you, or the person comes for mentee, 
I think uh, a lot of that is in action the when, when there's nothing better than a case study, as they say. So when people are seeing you in a meeting and taking a decisions in a particular way, or this being seeing you being decisive, or this see you saying, taking the right thing for the customer. For example, when we are saying, okay, this will work for the customer. Oh no, this is something that'll hurt the customer. Let's not walk that way. Then someone is watching you and saying, hey, this is how the management thinks. So I do think that a lot of mentoring is on the job. And it is by uh, experiential, it is by seeing, and it is by, uh, by through that route, actually. Okay. I want to end this interview then by asking you to leave our viewers with maybe one or two things that you think are definitely going to be opportunities that are upcoming for entrepreneurs. Well, actually, the last uh, few years, uh, the kind of investments that are going on uh, is, is just staggering. Uh, you know, instead of giving a loan waivers, for example, and uh, you know, doing such things, which may sometimes even hurt the credit culture. Uh, now, uh, farmers are being paid more so that they can repay the installment, right? So MSP. Mm -hmm. uh, similarly, the amount of maybe six lakh crores going through the Bharat Mala project, mm -hmm. the amount of roads being generated, you know, maybe 10, 14 or 15 lakh crores. Now. All that is precious money belonging to the government, belonging to the country, being spent in roads. Now that doesn't mean it doesn't help an entrepreneur, because an entrepreneur who bought a commercial vehicle to ride on that road, uh, or, or, or somebody who bought cranes, now the whole ecosystem of making of the crane, the employees who participate in it, the dealership who sold the crane, the manufacturer who made the crane, the whole ecosystem gets galvanized. So that is when that sort of money starts hitting the system in the form of money, I think, uh, or in the form of cash, I think that will be a spurring effect everyone will feel. Sure. The good thing is, according to me, that you're also creating infrastructure and also creating jobs. Okay. So I really think it's a very powerful thing and the kind of investments that are going on, I'm really hopeful in the next few years there'll be opportunities for everyone in the chain. Mr. Vedanathan, such a pleasure talking to you tonight. Thanks for speaking with us here on The Leaders of Tomorrow. Thank you very Thank much, Ananda. Bye. All right, that wraps up part two of a conversation that I did with V. Vedanathan of Capital First. If you have any feedback for us, here's how you get in touch. Leaders of Tomorrow at timesgroup.com is our email ID. You can also pick up uh, our Twitter handle. Sunanda underscore J is my personal Twitter handle. LOT underscore ET now is our official Twitter handle. You can also write to us on our Facebook page, Leaders of Tomorrow on ET now. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.